Hi everyone, Adrian Player here, mortgage broker based up in Brisbane. Uh, we only deal with property investors. Um, I myself have an investment portfolio of nine investment properties. And this is a really good article that came out from PropTrack at the end of uh, last year. PropTrack is owned by realestate.com. So we're going to put the link in the description below and uh, go through all of the areas that did really well last year and just talk about it for a bit. And uh, this is giving you a whole lot of value. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment and we'll see you on the next video. And if you do need help from an investment focused mortgage broker, feel free to reach out to me. My details are in the comments below. So let's go through the article. So uh, this is a great article. We're going to talk about what suburbs performed uh, nationally. Now you can see the majority of these are in the Perth market. Okay, over 30% growth year on year from the prior year. And we've got a little bit of uh, Adelaide there from Elizabeth North. But we all know that that particular suburb at the end of 2020 was in the high hundreds. You know, it was like a 170 to 190k kind of area in Elizabeth North. And, it, you know, when we look at a lot of these areas... Armadale, uh, Camillo, Aurelia and Parmelia. Aurelia and Parmelia are in the south of Perth. Armadale's kind of east, south east of Perth. They're all in the rougher, lower, lower socio-economic areas. And even if we talked about Armadale, it kind of started pumping mid to end of 2020. And you could get into that kind of area back then for, say, 250 to 270. So when you start seeing growths of over 30%, there is a lot of buyer demand right now. But there's also a lot of people that are missing out on property. So... They are starting to pivot to other markets. We think that personally that Perth and WA and south of Perth still has a lot of growth in the tank, but that kind of lightning and big amount of growth is, um, we think that that's going to stabilize a little bit over the next couple of years. Um, obviously, it's going to grow a lot more than some areas across the country, So, but people getting into Armidale at 400 to 420, 430 range is and you know you you're not going to be seeing these kind of 35 percent increases in the in the coming years they'll still do well in our opinion but yeah that's that's what our thoughts are so let's come down to the next one so best performing regional suburbs so withers is in the um bunbury market south of bunbury so everyone went through perth uh, they went through armadale they started out there then they loaded up in um, your Maddingtons, your Forest Fields around the airport there. Then they started going down to uh, Rockingham and then people priced out Rockingham so they went down to Greenfields. And then after that they started loading up Parmelia and Aurelia area. Then they went down to Mandura and now they're in the Bunbury market. So we, you can see that quite right now with Withers. I remember seeing Withers, uh, a great property. It would have been two and a half years it came up on my radar, and uh, it was 260, and the rent was 7.5% gross yield back then. Um, you're still getting very high gross growth yields in those markets. There's not a whole, a whole lot of listings on market. The vacancy is really low. And yeah, um, I remember seeing a property in the 260, 270 range uh, two and a half years ago. And right now, a three better in those markets or a four better. I mean, the three betters are listing for the high 300s. And, um, you know, a lot of those are going for 410, 420, 430 right now in the market. I remember seeing a four bedroom, two bath, two car in, um, I think it was the Eaton market. Um, and it started out listing for 400 and it ended up going for 500 plus with 15 plus bidders. So people are paying a lot of, I guess, overs and stupid money at the moment to get into those markets. And if they think that they're going to be getting this kind of growth in the coming years, I think they've got a rude awakening. But I still think that there's a whole lot of growth in the tank, just not at the 20 and 30 percent levels. All right, and there's a lot of people being, um, I guess, missing out on these properties, and then they're going to other areas of Queensland at the moment. That's where the buyer demand is at the moment, and that's where it's pivoting to. All right, so when we talk about the best performing regional suburbs, um, Kerry Park, that's where I bought four months ago. 
So I bought it for 330. It's probably worth over 400 now because uh, we got it under market just before the um, the pundits and the, the people on the podcast got in. Um, and yeah, it, it was 450 rent on it. We did a, a bedroom conversion. Um, made it a four better and the rent is with a signed lease at 580 a week and the debt's sitting at just over 286 so we've got yield on debt of about ten and a half percent on that without a granny flat which we've done very nicely with so these are a lot of the areas at the moment the best performing regional suburbs okay um, and you're noticing that a, a few areas of Queensland are starting to creep in and the back outskirts of, um, of South Australia because uh, not many people are going regional in South Australia at the moment. Okay, so we've got Bunbury, 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 and you know, they're priced everything else from Geraldton right down to Bustleton um, are already pricey. So where do they go once they get priced out of those suburbs? We all know where they're going. They're going to Queensland it's follow the leader and 80% of the people think that they're allowing data to make their decisions when it really it's just follow the leader so best performing suburbs in each state so Greater Brisbane and Riverview um, you look at all these Brisbane South and Ipswich locations where I've got seven uh, of my investment properties all right, so that's where the majority of where I put my money and look at the results. You're getting over 15% in the majority of markets, upwards of 24%. So um, anyone that didn't see that and didn't see the price disparity between the north, uh, the CBD, the northwest, and, and the value that you could get in the south and the, and the, and the west, so the Logan areas and the Ipswich areas, and they, they said, you know, people don't want to live there, you know, no one's going to pay that kind of money. Well, this happens when you get priced out of every other area. People have to live in places. So this is a prime example of making money in low socio areas. So Queensland, so um, this is the regional locations. You've got Chinchilla, Main Beach, Biloela, Port Douglas, Surface Paradise, Blackwater. So you do have a couple of mining towns here, right? And look, you're getting 14 to 20% in these areas and at much more affordable areas and ranges. All right, so um, normally you don't want to, if you want to go down this kind of track, you don't want to buy just one or two or stack five in one area. You want to go and get, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25 and stack one in every kind of area. And that's uh, if you want to play the high risk game. I, I don't particularly like being in one, one area mining towns, but each to their own. This will give you a good guidance on that. Greater Sydney. Uh, we're not going to focus on this too much. Look at the price ranges. No one can afford this, but pause the video if you want to have a look at that. Okay, New South Wales Regional. Where do you think people are going to go after they get priced out of northeast Queensland? This is where they're going, all right? And I think that there's going to be a huge play in the north of New South Wales. I won't say specifically, but that's just what I think and where the stats show and and kind of the areas as long as the area is big enough because a lot of banks start limiting your your borrowing power and the LVR that you can get if the town is bigger or smaller than 10,000 people and is there a local uh, big four or big six branch close by um, you know a lot of those areas got flooded out so there's a whole lot of value if people want to front run markets in in New South Wales, regional, um, as long as you're staying out of the flood zones, because obviously they got smacked 18, 24 months ago. All right, um, so there's a whole lot of value here. The, the rental yields are starting to tick up as well. Um, so again, we're not gonna focus too much on Greater Melbourne. Got a, a lot of this got smacked with the floods and people haven't gone back in. And obviously Victoria has a lot of issues with state budget deficits huge amounts of uh, debt 
council level, state level, federal level, and they're going after investors. They've gone after investors three times to plug the hole of the the state government deficit. So if it was me, I'd be avoiding Victoria um, and even Victoria Regional, even if it means the majority of people avoid it and there becomes more and more opportunity. I think that there are better areas to put your money. Um, and that's just a personal view of mine. So South, South um, Australia markets, Greater Adelaide, um, obviously you're looking at these kind of places and this market's been pumping for three to four years straight um, and they're still in the three to 400K range. So if you need value, a lot of that value stacked obviously in Adelaide North. Okay, and people that got priced out of, you know, your Hackham's, your, your Hallett Coves on the beach, the smart people went to went to the Gaulers and things like that. So that's entry into wine country. We saw a number of clients pick that market very early because everyone came in and wanted to be in Elizabeth Park and Elizabeth Downs and Elizabeth North. But obviously there's a lot of the huge uh, socio issues, drug problems, junkies and and how much higher can that market really go. So then they pivoted down to the Salisbury market. Um, and then the ones that could afford Hallett Cove and Hackham and all around there, but the smart ones pivoted to wine country because no one was looking at it and, and have a look, 22%. And I think that that has a lot more upside there. All right, so South Australian regional markets, yeah, you're staying in, like especially if you stay on the water, there's a lot of port locations with fisheries. You're in much smaller areas, all right? so. Just be aware of that when you're looking at these kind of areas and maybe you go into those areas if you're kind of spread out in other areas. I wouldn't be going for these areas direct, but it's on your screen. Have a look. And then Greater Hobart, Hobart tanked. It was one of the best performing um, areas probably since about 2015, 2014, right up until 2019. Uh, it pumped and look at all the negative numbers now and everyone's the Melbourne money's left and it's not pumping through and it's going nowhere at the moment, the Greater Hobart region because of the immense growth that it had prior. And then obviously a lot of people got pushed into these Devonports, Smithtons, um, you know, kind of the North Launceston areas. Um, Burnie is another one, but you can obviously see the growth has come off quite a lot. So it's at a different section of the market and Darwin we're not even going to focus on. All right, and ACT is all crown land, um, but have a have a look at, you know, um, top performing suburbs, biggest public sector, um, other than, other than um, Darwin. Darwin has a really large public sector as per the percentage of the population, so you can have a look at that. And obviously, you've got uh, Western Australia, which is where the majority of people are pumping at the moment. And we've already kind of talked about that, so I'm not going to stop. So um, if this has given you a whole lot of value on what my thoughts are in the areas, you can make a lot of inferences for what I'm saying. Uh, if you have a broker that, that doesn't talk about property, come across to us. We talk about property every day. We've got hundreds of clients in the property investment space. I've got nine investment properties myself. So hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment below and book an appointment or send me an email if you want to reach out if you need help in the property investment space and, and you need help reviewing your loans, making sure the structures are right, checking the borrowing power and doing the more complex stuff like trust lending where you can recycle your borrowing power with the right property uh, selections and the right account that will sign off. You can just keep on going. You know, a lot of people think that you you can't do that in this day and age with the current lending environment, but you absolutely can. You're just limited to a certain type of property strategy and a certain amount of deposit per property. All right. So if anyone needs help there, I'm also doing this personally using trust to build out my portfolio and I'll probably buy another three or five this year. Um, because my income does not need to go up for me to buy more property. As long as I've got the deposit and the equity and my financials don't go down, I can just keep on going. All right, so hope this video has given you a lot of value. Hit that subscribe button. We've got to get those subscribe numbers up. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and we'll see you on the next video. All right, bye.